Got uh, Zini in Brazil. Hello. Yeah. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hi, how, Hi, are, how you? are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the show. Um, I was a believer most part of my life, and since 2006, I became an atheist. And the show helped me a lot from to understand more about atheism and see all see all that nonsense written in the Bible. Um, anyway. Uh, when I became an atheist, uh, some relatives or friends, from time to time, they usually come to me and ask why I became an atheist. And one of the reasons that I usually give them uh, is because this God uh, depicted in the Bible has no morality at all. He asked uh, their sons, let's say this way, uh, to do horrible things in his name. Like, for example, the example that I usually give to those friends or, or relatives is about Abraham and how God asked him to kill his own son. And when I give this example, I usually ask, would you kill your own son if God asks you? And most of these people say no, but some t sometimes some friends said, well, I would because he's God and he can do anything. And I was shocked when I heard that answer. And since that day, uh, I don't want to, to have any relationship with these people anymore because this is something horrible to say. And uh, in my opinion, it, it, it's almost like if I say, well, uh, I want to, to have sex with kids. This is, this is horrible. Uh, I cannot uh, understand someone that says something like this or someone that say that would kill his own son just because uh, imaginary being asked him. So I was wondering if you guys had a similar issue with relatives or friends when you became an atheist, and if you have any idea why some people have such blind faith in God that are able to do horrible things in his name. Um, what do you think about that? Well, I think they probably shouldn't have children, for one thing. Um, and actually, you know, we have had cases of people who claim to have killed their children uh, either to save them from a life of sin, as in the case of Andrea Yates down in Houston. He, she drowned her five children um, so that they would never grow up and they would, you know, they would never commit sin. And she was basically trying to guarantee that they would go to heaven. Um, and, and she was originally convicted of all five murders and later that was overturned. She's actually in a, in a mental institution now. So basically what we say as a civilized uh, society to people who claim to do this is that you're nuts and we're going to lock you away. Um, and, and I don't know that there's any other response to something like that. Um, and, and I guess to, to address your original question, you know, have I ever had any relatives that would say that? And the answer is no. Uh, most of them claim that, that their God would never ask them to do such a thing. And so then you point out in the Bible where, in fact, um, he did, you know, he told Abraham to do it. Um, he accepted uh, Jephthah's sacrifice. Um, and, and, of course, you know, he sacrificed his own son, if you believe the Christian doctrine. So, you know, there's all this, this evidence there that child sacrifice is part of the bargain here. Um, yeah, we've, had, so. we've had actually people call into the show before, and, and I've asked them that, and they've said, yeah, I would, after, after initially saying no or whatever. Um, I think most of them are, well, they're looking at it from a different perspective, and it's not that they necessarily uh, would kill their kids. They're, they're looking at it with this preconception that if there is a God, he's all-powerful and can do whatever he wants, and he is, uh, and they, they have an additional preconception that no matter what he does, it's morally right. Um, so if he instructed them to kill their kid or rape their neighbor or whatever else, that he must have some ultimate goal uh, that is good, and that uh, even if he didn't, there's nothing they could do about it, they better follow, otherwise they're going to get squashed like a bug. It's, it's one of the kind of poisonous self-defense mechanisms that is built into many different religions. And that is, you're not allowed to question. You're not allowed to use your own mind. You are inferior. You are uh, uh, spoiled goods. You're, you're, the, you're the 
fruit of a poisonous tree. You are uh, a base individual who is morally corrupt, and there is some being that's speaking to you which is supposedly morally infallible. And whatever instruction that being gives you must be good and you must carry it out. And if you have doubts or questions, it's because you're somehow broken. You're not properly in tune. This is built into religion, to in a variety of religions, to keep people from questioning, um, to keep people submissive, servile, um, and to you know what it's it's like the the battered housewife uh, type of syndrome, where you're constantly breaking somebody down and making them feel worthless and undeserving of your love, so that even when you treat them like crap they will take the blame for it, that this is somehow their fault or whatever. Uh, it's, it's a similar mechanism, it's a, a complex mess, um, and it's hard for people to break out of it. Now, the only thing that I can say that's good is that if you ask, if you're really, really disturbed about those people that, that say, yes, I'd kill my kid if God told me to, ask them if there's anything short of that that would get them to kill their kid. If their answer is anything other than no, you should call the authorities. If their answer is yes, that the one and only reason they would kill their own kid is, is if a god told them to, um, and they seem otherwise mentally stable, you probably don't have a great deal to worry about because I'm relatively certain that since I don't think there is a god, that, it, that it's unlikely that any god's going to actually tell them to do so. The problem, as Jen pointed out, is that there are mentally unstable people um, who do what Andrea Yates did, who do kill their kids, and, and some because they think a God's told them to, and some because they've bought into a, a, a theology, and as I pointed out uh, several times, including when we were at Bradley, there could not be any possible sacrifice that could be viewed as more loving. If you're the parent of a kid, and you are convinced that if you allow this infant to grow up, that their eternal soul is at risk, if you allow them to keep living, but if you kill them as an infant, they will go to heaven. Even if you end up going to hell, what greater sacrifice could there be to sacrifice your own eternal existence for your kids? And while almost no believer actually thinks of it in those terms, that is the logical conclusion of that particular theological position. The fortunate thing is that almost nobody looks at it in those terms, and in much and 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 along that same line, much many of the things that, for example, Christianity uh, uh, says is moral, or Judaism says is moral, or or whatever, most of the adherents don't believe that anymore. They have been pulled away from their religious roots by secular progressives who have changed the world around them, and have said, you know. We'd like to live in a world that benefits everybody, that is positive, that is that we have a chance to participate in uh, what kind of rules we're going to have. We are not willing to accept that something is moral by fiat or declaration or divine edict or whatever. Uh, something is either moral or not based on our assessment of the action with result with in relation to the goals that we set. And if the goals are a better, healthier society, obviously, in much the same way that killing all the lawyers doesn't necessarily pr produce that, neither does killing kids. Um, and as I mentioned in, in both of the uh, secular morality lectures, we, the biggest thing we need to do is inform theists that they don't have to be stealth secularists. They don't have to sit there and, and uh, criticize the secular uh, morality that they actually adhere to. They are the biggest uh, indicator that secular morality is superior because they have sacrificed the traditional values that they would have accepted by nature of the holy book that they adhere to um, and have adopted the secular values that they criticize. Uh, it's, it's crystal clear to anybody who observes what actually goes on uh, with respect to morality in society. And that's a really long answer for you. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, I understand all this argument. Um, what really bothers me is the fact that these people are willing to go against their moral uh, without thinking about the consequence or, or trying to, to understand it. Well, even if there is a cause, uh, uh, it's hard for me to, to, 
to understand how they are willing to do such thing. But yeah. No, even yeah. if even if there is a God, the act, the, the both the command and the act would still be immoral. It would be immoral to say kill your kid. Yeah, yeah um, exactly. It, it doesn't matter, which is why, uh, you know, when I was talking about this uh, during the previous lectures, I, I made a point of saying it doesn't matter whether or not some some God exists or some being exists. The system that you're talking about is a might makes right one, and there's nothing uh, moral about it. You know, the fact that that I'm giving you an instruction. Uh, I mean, it's just it's just an edict. It's it, there's no moral consideration there at all. Yeah, that's true. Well, thanks, Matt. Thanks, Jen. Uh, and again, thank you for the show. The content of this video is produced by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. If you enjoyed this content and are willing and able to provide a donation, please visit the website below.